I'm Marco Mauri from the University of Edinburgh, but what I'm going to present now is uh, uh, work done at Inria uh, in the group of Hide de Jong uh, a couple of years ago. So, um, and regard to the condition and the trade-off to announce protein production in synthetic bacterial communities. So we know that in nature, many microorganisms occur in communities and they have actually complex interactions. Despite that, we know very little about how these communities are established and actually maintain, so regarding their stability and composition. And one way to overcome this complexity is uh, assembling simplified synthetic microbial consortia. In such a way, we can uh, define, well define their behaviors. So we can, we can control their, their behaviors by creating specific uh, uh, synthetic microorganism. And on top of that, synthetic bacteria are also uh, good because it can be exploited to produce bio product of interest. Uh, you can imagine of uh, biofuels, uh, small molecules or drugs. And uh, here I would like to study a simple synthetic microbial community that is able to exhibit cross-feeding and mutualism, and at the same time produces a recombinant protein. So uh, what are we talking about specifically? We um, uh, focus on uh, uh, Scherichia coli. Uh, we know that growing on glucose coli is able to uh, transform part of the glucose into biomass, that is here indicated by B, and uh, uh, when grow very fast, also secrete acetate. Acetate is actually toxic for the growth of the cell and impairs the growth, so slow down the growth of the cell. And uh, we can also engineer uh, easily a Escherichia coli to uh, produce some protein of interest, here I call it H, so heterologous protein, and we call this uh, um, ideal uh, strain the producer. So how can we uh, sustain better the growth of this uh, producer? Uh, the, the idea is to remove the acetate that impairs the growth, and we can do it by tidying the producer by another engineered strain that we call the cleaner, that eats up more acetate, a little bit of glucose also, and detoxify the environment so that the producer can produce more H protein. But here there is a point, actually, the cleaner is through that detoxifies the environment, but at the same time, take out, uh, so divert uh, resources such as glucose from the production of the uh, H protein. So asking what are the conditions in which uh, the synthetic community outperforms the sole producer in the production of H is actually not a trivial question. And we uh, tackle this question by creating a horse grain model. And here we just give you a glimpse of uh, the mathematical model behind it. So we have uh, here the producer, uh, where the, we have the glucose that can be uptaken with a certain rate uh, and also secretes acetate at a certain point. Acetate can be reused as a secondary carbon source and all the resources can be converted either in biomasses or in uh, the H protein. And this one is given by the, this uh, yield that tells you how much uh, of the fraction of the nutrients are converted in biomasses or H protein. Uh, this one is described by a system of differential equations uh, where we specifically um, also, sorry, where we also uh, specify the um, rates uh, given by some uh, phenomenological function. Uh, we have the glucose uptake rate and the acetate toxicity, the acetate uptake rate, and finally, the most important one is this one, the acetate overflow rate. So why is important, uh, it will come become clear uh, later. Uh, specifically, the acid overflow doesn't happen at any time point, but only when the uh, growth rate reaches a specific threshold. Before there is no acid overflow, from a certain point on, when the growth rate is high enough, acid starts to be secreted and also to be in the environment. You can also compute the uh, growth rate, and this one, uh, uh, it's I mean, simply by summing up uh, these two equations that determines the whole biomass in the system. And what you find out is that the growth rate depends inversely on the amount of uh, H protein that is produced. This is quite well known. So uh, it tells you that producing an heterologous protein uh, decreases the growth rate. So basically it's a burden for the cell. So from here, we moved uh, to the uh, Cleaner, so to the consortium, uh, by studying the producer by a cleaner that is uh, synthetically engineered also, and uh, uh, has a reduced glucose uptake rate, so can uh, use less glucose, but 
and it has an increased acetate aggregate. So can uh, scavenge out the acetate from the environment, detoxifying the environment, basically. We decided to study this consortium in uh, chemostat. Why that? Because it's a well-defined uh, uh, environment where we can have steady states and we can provide glucose by an inflow, by an inflow and take out the nutrient uh, uh, the, and the biomasses and the H protein via uh, an outflow. We have a dilution rate uh, at steady state, specifically in chemostat, dilution rate means uh, uh, that the growth rate of the producer and the cleaner are actually equal. So whenever I chat about the dilution rate, I'm also saying uh, setting the producer and cleaner uh, growth rate. So from ER, we studied the coexistence force. So what we did was to put in the system producer and cleaner together at time zero, leave the system evolve at steady state in the chemostat, and check uh, given uh, all the couple of glucose and dilution rate, the outcome at steady state. So actually the glucose doesn't make, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, it's not really important. What is important is the dilution rate. And we found out three different regimes for low dilution rate, when acetate is not present in the medium because producer are growing very slowly and they cannot uh, secrete acetate, only the producer survives a steady state. Then we have a middle regime where we have coexistence. So there is acetate in the, in the system that is secreted by producer. And so these ones sustain the growth of the cleaner and we can have producer and cleaner together. And finally the washout uh, when the dilution rate is too, my, uh, too high to uh, sustain uh, the uh, maximal growth rate of the uh, two strains. So we have these three regimes, but what about the productivity of each protein? That is the point of interest. Uh, we compare in this case, how much each protein was produced by the sole producer in the system and the consortium. So the sole producer here is given by uh, these open dots curve and the consortium is given by the uh, closed dot probes. Obviously, when there is no acetate in the system, the two cases are actually equal because uh, there is only the producer at steady state in any case. When uh, we have acetate in the system and there is coexistence, uh, we see that productivity of the consortium uh, is much higher than productivity of the sole producer. And that happens because the cleaner takes out acetate and so the producer can grow better and produce also uh, much more H protein. So in this case, we can improve productivity, but there is a drawback actually. And the drawback is this one. If you check the yield of the chemostat, so basically how much glucose grows in production of the H protein, or if you would like to rephrase it, the efficiency of the consortium in transforming the substrate into H protein, uh, you see that uh, uh, comparing again the case of sole producer, this one with open, uh, dots. And the case of the consortium, this one with uh, full uh, fillet dots, uh, you see that the consortium decreases uh, the productivity uh, by increasing the dilution rate. And this one happens because the cleaner actually uh, is able to divert some uh, nutrients, some glucose from the producer. And in this way, lowers down the um, possibility of transforming all the glucose into H proteins. So we found this trade-off. Basically, the coexistence actually improves the productivity from one side, but uh, also it lowers the process yield. And to uh, summarize what we actually found, so basically we have studied a prototypical synthetic consortium where uh, the productivity of a recombinant protein is uh, improved under the condition of coexistence. And this one happens because uh, we have a detoxifying effect uh, given by the cleaner that removes the acid. There is a trade-off in the system, so there is a gain in productivity, but there is a, a price to pay that is very reduced yield in the system. And it's due to the cost of sustaining the cleaner population. Uh, generally, this one is actually a good point to link a single uh, species to the community because this trade-off is something that is actually well known for a single species. For example, uh, what I presented to you is uh, uh, that uh, the yield decrease uh, uh, by increasing the growth rate because uh, substrate goes uh, into overflow of acetate. And uh, we found also this trade-off here at the level of uh, community. So with that, and I would like to uh, thank, first of all, uh, the people that work with me. So Ida De Young, Eugenio Cicumani, Jean-Luc and uh, all of you for uh, the attention. Thank you.